Okay, well, it's time for our new lesson, uh, 1.3. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to learn the distance formula and midpoint formulas in a coordinate plane. Um, hopefully your algebra skills are pretty good with square roots and stuff. <clears throat> so our objective will be students will be able to find midpoints and length of segments in a coordinate plane. So a natural or central question would be how do you find the distance and the midpoint between two points in a coordinate plane? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out. So uh, basically we use these two formulas and um, there's not a whole lot more to this lesson. So pretty easy stuff as long as your algebra skills are decent. So the midpoint. Here's a picture of a midpoint. Sometimes we'll use the letter M for a midpoint. Um, it's the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So it's basically the halfway point. Um, pretty easy idea. And um, segment bisector. Well, a segment bisector basically creates a, a midpoint because a segment bisector is a point, ray, or line that cuts the segment at the midpoint. So um, if it's a bisector, it means like if you have a line coming through right here, bam, it always passes through the exact midpoint. So you automatically get these two sides over here are going to be congruent. And it doesn't matter if it's a ray or a or a line or a segment. So for example, you could have a segment right here, A and B also right here. And um, it could be a ray. It doesn't it doesn't really matter what it is. You can have a it's a bisector though as long as these two sides are congruent. And if those two sides are congruent, that means then that this is a midpoint. So, pretty easy idea. I think we'll just move on. And uh, by the way, you have a study guide again, so um, you'll do some vocabulary. And um, I'll just show you that real quick. The study guide here, you're going to have a couple of vocabulary words. Uh, lots of times you can use your book if you don't catch the word during the lesson. Uh, then we're going to have some problems to do. And I'll come my arrow. Yeah. It froze for a second. Okay. So you'll have some easy problems to do here and um, well, pretty easy stuff actually. So the study guide will have some problems to do. This will be classwork so it goes in as a classwork grade. So um, you're welcome to work on that as we do the lesson. In any event, uh, we're right here. So we talked about midpoint and a segment bisector. And the bisector could be a ray, a line, a segment, or whatever. But it's going to intersect at the midpoint. Okay, so let's continue. Let's do an example. Um, uh, some of this stuff's pretty easy, pretty easy stuff. Move that out. Okay, and the skateboard design BW bisects XY at the point T. Well, if it bisects XY, now you gotta keep track here. XY is this segment going this way, okay? And uh, it may turn out that it also bisects going this way, but we. Oh, it says and it bisects xt. Oh, no, 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 it says xt is equal to 39. So we actually don't know for sure if it bisects going this way. We just know it bisects this way. Well, what are we told here? We're, we're told that uh, we have a bisector. And so naturally on, on this problem, that's why they have this tick mark here and this tick mark here, which would make this point right there a midpoint. Now, and so what are we told? Um, xt. This distance here is 39.9. And uh, 
we want to find the total distance across here. Well, since that's a midpoint, this side's equal to this side, so this is also 39.9. And so what would the total length be? Okay, that's pretty easy stuff, right? That's basically 40 and 40. So it's almost 80. So it's going to be 79.8, I think. If we just take uh, 39.9, multiply it by 2. Oh, I'm take that off there. Let me just, hmm. let me clean this up a little bit. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. In any event, I'm pretty sure that's equal to 79.8. Uh, so pretty easy problem. So uh, I have trickier problems. Let's try another one. Mm -hmm. Oh, so now we got some x's in here. So it seems like uh, for some odd reason uh, they put these algebraic problems in here. But what do we do? Let's see here. We're told m is the midpoint. Well, that means these two segments are congruent. And if something's congruent, it means their measures are equal. So basically that means you can you can put an equal sign um, right here. And you can basically say 4x minus 1 must equal the other side, right? 3x plus 3. So this gives us a little algebraic equation to solve. And this doesn't look too challenging. Uh, let's see. Remember, when we're doing algebra, we have to do uh, the same thing on both sides of an equal sign. Here's an equal sign, so I'm going to subtract 3x here. I'm going to do the same thing, subtract 3x right here, draw a little line underneath, and these subtract off. 4x minus 3x is equal to 1x. And at the same time, why don't we move this one? We could do the inverse operation of subtraction, which is addition. I'm going to add one. And as long as I do it to this other side, we're following the rules of algebra, so we should be safe. And 3 plus 1, of course, is 4. And we don't really need a 1 in front, right, of the x. So let's we'll say x is equal to 4. Now. Some people like to stop right here and say, look, I'm done, I found x. Well, actually our job was not to find x. We're asked to find the length of VW. So don't be a bozo. What we want to do is finish the problem, do what we're asked to do. We're asked to find the length of VW. So we got to put it in the x right there. So one step further, we do 4 times 4 minus 1. And of course, that equals 15. So, there we go. That's the length of VW. Okay, so uh, pretty easy problem. A little algebra involved there. So if you forgot all your algebra during the summer, that's too bad. <laughs> you need to pick it all up again. So, uh, good little review problem. Okay, let's continue. Uh, how about if you take a minute now and try these on your own. Uh, this one should only take about 30 seconds, this one maybe a minute and a half. So you go ahead and do that and uh, come back and check and see if I get the same answers as you. Okay, so uh, we're told that we have a segment bisector, so this side is congruent to this side, so this side also is 1 and 7 eighths. And we're asked to find the total length, so basically all we need to do is add those two together. So we just add those two together, and you get 1 plus 1, which is 2, and 7 eighths plus 7 eighths is 14. How many of you guys think it's 16? <laughs> uh, no. <clears throat> Remember, when you're adding fractions, the denominator remains the same, so it's not 16 down here. It's actually... It's actually 8. 14, 8. So, so we can do some algebraic manipulation and simplify this. Uh, for example, there's a factor of 2 in there. So we could write this as 2. And then we could write this as 2 times 
7. And then we can write this as uh, 2 times 4. And then the 2's cancel off, right? Because they're common factors. So then we can say this is equal to 2 and 7 fourths. Um, but you might remember that 4 goes into 7 one time. So this is really 2. And then 1. How many? Will there be 3 fourths left? Well, since that's really 1 and 3 fourths, that's really going to be 3 and 3 fourths is our final answer. Of course, you could just do that on a calculator, and your calculator can take care of your fractions for you. A lot of you guys probably don't like fractions, so your calculator can be your friend and help you with your problems. So in any event, there's the first one, 3 and 3 fourths. Okay, how about the second one? This time, um, we have another midpoint right here. So it means this side here is going to go to this side. And that basically means you could put an equal sign right here. So let me just write that out. We get 5x minus 7 is equal to 11 minus 2x. And we just need to use our basic algebra skills here. To move this 2x across the equal sign, you need to do the opposite. And that's being subtracted right now on the 2x. And so the opposite, of course, is just adding 2x. And what you do to one side of an equal sign, you have to do to the other side. So we have to add 2x over here. At the same time, I can move the 7 over by doing the opposite. And that looks like to me it's subtraction. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equal sign. And I could do both of these operations at the same time. Well, a negative and a positive give me 0 right here. Those are gone. 11 plus 7 is 18. And over here I get, let's see, minus 7 plus 7 is 0. So I get uh, 5x plus 2x is 7x. Okay. So uh, now I just divide by 7 here by this one by 7. I get x is equal to 18 sevenths. Now, again, a bozo would stop there. We weren't asked to find x. We are actually asked to find uh, pq. So what we need to do is substitute this back in up here and plug it in right there. Now that will give us this length and then we need, just need to double it to get p the entire length PQ. So so what do we have here? We're going to need well, this is the equation right here. We want 5 times X. Well X itself is 18 sevenths. And then we need to subtract 7 from that. Ooh, bunch of fractions. Well this isn't too terribly hard. I can just do the work right here. Yeah, once again, if you have your calculator, you can easily do this. Uh, let's see, 5 times 18. It's almost 100 because, let's see, 5 times 20 would be 100. So I think 5 times 18 would be 90 then. So this is really 90 over 7 minus, let's see, if I get a common denominator, if I make that 7, uh, this would be 49 sevenths, right? Because if I multiply that by 7, multiply this by 7, yep, 40, that's supposed to be 49. 49 sevenths. Well, okay, so now we could subtract the fractions 90 minus 49. That's almost 50, right? So 90 minus 50 would be 40. And there's one more. Let's see. 51. So this is... <clears throat> We just found the length here. And what did we get again? We had 41 sevenths. Well, that means this length over here is 41 sevenths. So what we need to do is add those two together. And that would give us 82 sevenths. And so how many times does 7 go in there? It goes in. And once there, one, 
goes in uh, 11 times, right? Because 11 times 7 is 77. And how many would be left over? 5? 7? Let's see, that's 5. Okay, so there's our answer. And that's what would be equal to PQ. P Q. Well, so there's an algebra problem. Hopefully you got the same answers as I did on both of those. And now let's continue. And let's look and see what happens when we go to a coordinate grid. How to find the midpoint then. So we have the midpoint formula. And this may look complicated, but really if you're going to find the midpoint, you remember you have two coordinates. You have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So basically this is your X coordinate and this is your Y coordinate. However, since you're finding the midpoint, you're going to go halfway. So this is the total distance in the X direction. So to find the halfway point, we just find the average. And this is the average. I mean, remember like if you have two test scores, you find the average. Like if you found, if you got one test score was a 70 and another score was 90. To find the average, you just add those two and divide by two. And of course the average uh, will be uh, 160 divided by 2 and that of course would be 80. Well, that's exactly what's happening right here. You add the two x coordinates and divide by 2. And the same thing is happening in the y. You find out this y distance from here to here. And uh, the halfway point would be the average between this coordinate and this coordinate. So anyhow, if you remember that, it makes the formula really easy to work with. Anyhow, this will be much easier once we use some actual numbers in here. So let's try an example where we have some numbers. So we want to find the midpoint. Okay, so it's, it, it's probably not necessary for you to graph the points on the coordinate grid, but I think I will just for fun, just to show you a little visual, a little visual here to help you understand what's going on. So where is R? R is at one negative three. So if I go one and down three, that's where R is. And then where's S? S is at four, two. So one, two, three, four, or two. And this is where S is. So what we're trying to do is find the midpoint from here. Imagine that's a straight line or a straight segment. And it looks like it's somewhere right around here. Anyhow, um, we could use the midpoint formula. I recommend until you get the formula memorized, just write it down every time. So what is it? It's x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And then the y coordinate is y1 plus y2 and divide that one by 2. Now what are these x1s and y's? Uh, what do they refer to? Well from algebra you might remember the first point we call x1 and x, x1 x1 y1. That's, that's these two coordinates. Okay, And then This would be your second point. So this is your x, x2, and y2. Okay, so, you know, this isn't too hard. You just plug in the numbers into the formula. So you add the two x's, that's these two. So it's gonna be one plus four. And then you divide that one by two, okay? And then you add the y coordinates, that's these two. So minus three plus two, and then you divide that one by two. So what do we get? We get five halves, and this other one is gonna be negative one half. Now if you wanna write that in decimal, that's okay. The decimal equivalent would be like 2.5 comma negative point five. Now let's see, does that make sense? So if you go over two and a half, that's right about here, and down one half, puts the midpoint right here. And that's exactly where we kind of expected it to be. 
And what we know at this point is that this side then would be equal to this side. Hmm, pretty amazing. Okay, so we could have done the problem without the graph. Um, but I, I think it helps to see what's going on. And um, so if you want on your homework, you probably don't need the graph to do these problems. Okay, so now, now I do recommend using the graph because this one's a little bit more difficult. Now this time we're given the midpoint. We're told the midpoint is at 2, 1. Now maybe I should use a different color here. Midpoint is at 2, 1. So right here is our midpoint. And they give us one of the other endpoints. J is at 1, 4. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. J is right here. Okay, so what they want us to do is find the coordinates of the other endpoint K. Well, we can use the idea that the midpoint is the exact halfway point. So here's a little trick. Ask yourself, well, how do you go from J to M? It looks like we went over one, okay? And then we went down three. So if we go over one again and down three to here, then we'll have our point that we're after. This will be our point K, okay? So um, let me try to explain why that works because this distance is going to be exactly the same. This distance is going to be exactly the same as this distance because we're basically using the idea of slope here. Um, we generated another point. There's the midpoint and then there's this point K. So we over one and down three, over one and down three. We did the same thing twice. So that means this distance is equal to this distance. Without being too complicated, we found the other endpoint. So on this type of problem, I do recommend using the graph because you can use my um, erase this and show you one more time. Um, make it a little more cleaner. So again, the midpoint was at 2, 1, which was right here. This was our midpoint. And J was at 1, 4, 1, 4, right here it was J. So we went over one and down three. And so if we go over one and down three again, then this distance would be congruent to this distance right here. And since they're congruent, that makes that the midpoint, and that means this point here is K. Well, hopefully that's clear. So on this type of problem here where we're where we're doing this midpoint and endpoint stuff, I definitely recommend using the graph. It'd be a lot easier to do this problem with the graph. On this one where you're just finding the midpoint, you could probably just use the formula. Mm -hmm. Well, how about if you try it now? Okay, so you have the two problems also. Again, this first problem, you could probably just use the formula. On this problem, you probably want to use the graph. Why don't you try it first? It'll give you about three minutes. You can work with your neighbor if you like. That'd be a good idea to see if you're getting the same answer. And work together. And in just a few moments, I'll go over the problems, make sure you got the same answer I did. Okay, so let's assume that you're done now. <clears throat> The first problem, we are going to use the midpoint formula. So basically what we want to do is add the x's. So we're going to add the x's 1 plus 7 and then divide that one by 2. Okay, put a little comma here and then add the y coordinates. Uh, it's going to be 2 plus 8 and divide that one by 2. And so we get the midpoint to be 8 over 2 comma 10 over 2 and that of course is equal to uh, 4 
come on. Bye. Well, we may as well look at the graph just to make sure it looks right. Uh, we're going to say that this is equal to the midpoint. Okay. Well, let's look at the graph and see if it looks like the correct location. So we're told that A is at 1, 2, which is right here. There's A and B is at 7, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8 would be right around here, I think. So B would be right here. And if this were a segment kind of going over here, we're saying that the midpoint is going to be at 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like it would be right here. This would be where our midpoint. And this segment does look like it's equal to that one. So, um, once again, you can try that little trick. Notice if you go over 3 and up 3, you go over 3 and then up 3. And if you go up 3 and over 3, that way you get to the end point B. So that's the method you want to use on this next problem. So let me erase what we have. And we will. I'll show you the, this next example, number 4. Okay, so and on this problem, I do recommend using the, um, the, the graph. So where is uh, the midpoint? Well, the midpoint is at negative 1, 2. Negative 1, down 2. So there's our midpoint. And where is the other point? It's at 4, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4. Here's the point right here. Here's W. Okay, so if this is the end point, what we know then is that this is going to be the halfway mark. So this segment here is going to be congruent to another one down here somewhere. Well, so let's see how do how far do we go over? We go over one, two, three, four, five. We we'll go over five and then go over five. And so we we'll go over five this way. And then we go down one, two, three, four, five, six. Go down six. So if we try the same thing, if we go over five, one, two, three, four, five, and then down six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that would put us right here. And the endpoint here is going to be V. So now we just need the coordinates of V. V is going to be at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. The x coordinates negative 6. And how far down are we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 8. So, not terribly hard if you use your graph. Again, we went over 5 this way. We went down 6. So we'll go over 5 again. Takes us to here. We'll go, we'll go down six. Takes us to there. Went down six. So uh, that's the easy way to find the uh, other endpoint. So we are done. Now let's look at the distance formula. This is just basically Pythagorean's theorem. Uh, you might remember from uh, Algebra 1, you got Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This happens for any right triangle. So anyhow, that's what you have here. This part is like the a right there. This is like your b. And this distance here is your C. So basically, if you're finding the distance C, you take a square root here and a square root here. And that's why they have a square root down here. In any event, this is not terribly hard. We just plug in all the numbers into the formula here, and we're done. Hopefully, you can handle the square roots. And if not, you can use your calculator. They'll help you a lot. So let's go ahead and... 
try a problem now. And well, once again, you have the graph, but you don't really need the graph to solve this problem. All you need is a formula. So I recommend until you know the formula, just practice writing it down. Distance is equal to the square root. It's a big square root. And it's going to be x2 minus x1. You take that quantity and square it. Then you add it to y2 minus y1. And you take that quantity and square it. Okay? So basically, you subtract the x coordinates, square. Take the y coordinates, subtract, and square. So where are, here's the x coordinate, this one. Subtract this one. Okay? So this is my first point. This is my second point. I take the second one and subtract the first one. So our distance is going to be what? It's going to be the square root uh, 4 minus 2. And then we square that. We add that to these two. I'm going to subtract these two now. Now be careful with these negatives. We have a, a negative 1 minus 3. Then we square that. Okay, now our job is just to simplify it now. Notice 4 minus 2 is actually 2, and then you square it, so we're going to get the distance is equal to the square root of 4. That's 2 squared. And then a minus 1 minus 3, that's actually minus 4, but you're going to square that. So minus 4 squared is equal to minus 4 times minus 4. And of course, minus times a minus is a positive, and 4 times 4 is 16. So this just boils down to 16. So this is equal to the square root of 20. Now, <clears throat> probably uh, if you're familiar with square roots, you realize that this could simplify a little bit because this is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, but the square root of 4 is actually 2 square root 5. Now, that would be the distance from this point to the point S. Um, so if you're not very good with your square roots, that's okay. You could put this in your calculator, and your calculator will simplify it from here to here for you. And... Uh, so that way you can get your answers correct on the homework. Let's just take a look at where these points are just for the fun of it. R is at 2, 3. Here, here's R right here. And S is at 4, negative 1. So this distance we just found out that distance is approximately 2 square root 5. And you could have also found the decimal equivalent to that, but uh, this is the exact answer, so I'll just leave it like that. Okay. So, let's continue. Uh, the essential question was, how do you find the distance in the midpoint? midpoint between two points in a coordinate plane? Well, here's the two formulas you'd use. You use either the distance formula or the midpoint formula and you'd be on your way. So, um, this lesson isn't terribly hard. It's just you have to you have to plug these numbers in here and then you have to simplify things. So, hopefully your algebra skills are pretty good. You can deal with square roots. And uh, if you're not very good, I recommend using a calculator that has a fraction key on it. So, um, well, good luck on your assignment. I'll see you tomorrow.